Hey there, today we'll be doing another question that is from the graph playlist that we are continuing from lead code card. And the question is 1162 as far from land as possible from lead code. And the question statement is given an n cross n grid containing only values 0 and 1, where 0 represents water and 1 represents land. Find a water cell such that its distance to the nearest land cell is maximized and return the distance if no land or water exists in grid return minus one and the distance is calculated using manhattan distance so this part actually we do not need to worry about that part but let's see how do we define the distance and what is our answer going to be so let's just take this test case that is example one that is given to us and this example one's I'll just zoom this out okay so this example one they have said that all the ones that are present there that is this this and this one okay so which is the farthest zero that is possible if we just take this zero right here this cell all the ones if you carefully see are at a distance of two at a max is a distance of two if we need to go to this one we'll have to travel two cells again this will and this will and this will also take two cells so every guy is taking two cells in order to reach the nearest one so that is why our answer will be two which is given now coming on to this example we see that the farthest zero to reach the nearest one what is it so this is the farthest zero that is there and it will reach this one through which path one two three and four so it will take four steps that is why our answer is this now let's take a dummy matrix that is here and this will clear your thoughts on this question completely so if we have something like this so we have these many zeros and two ones right here fine so the question statement is actually telling you that if there is a one for every one you just need to get me the value zero which is on the farthest cell okay so basically this means for a particular zero we need to maximize the distance to the corresponding ones so this is a zero this is a one this is also a one this cell is a one and this cell is a one i need to find a zero in such a cell that its distance is maximum okay so what can we do if we take this zero right here the distance to the nearest one is what one itself so we'll get the answer as one if we take this zero nearest is again one we'll get again one if we take this one we will get again one mind you for this guy it is two but for this guy this one it is one only fine so we cannot take this one also but if we take this guy right here we see that we'll take two distance in order to reach this and we'll take this guy right here that is a distance of three in order to reach this so what is the maximum distance that we can take the maximum distance that we can take is whatever we are getting from right here fine so i'll just zoom this out and we'll just come on to here and okay so uh, continuing the question part this is what our maximum distance is stating us so the maximum distance that this one will be taking on to do it okay so now we'll just get on to this okay so continuing further on we see that whatever the distance that we get right here is our answer and what is it see the nearest cell we can reach is this is two and this right here we take a distance of three so whichever is the minimum one that is what that is what we are going to take fine and further on we had taken a distance of one to reach the other cells and this one is taking two fine so that is your maximum answer that you can get now how to do this so in these types of problems so this is a type of problem where you have to find actually the shortest path from a particular cell and we tend to take bfs for this okay so how are we going to do this in order to do this what we can apply is a simple bs bf bfs obviously sorry about that and after that what we can do is we can actually take on all the ones that are there and put it into our queue 
So now let's understand this why so. If we just take on all the cells that is there in our cube, we get what all values? We get one one. Just think of it as a one based indexed matrix. We get one and three. And after that, we get three comma one. After that, we are getting uh, three comma three. So these are the possible values or cell which are having ones. Now let's just do it for one value, and you'll understand it for the other ones. For one comma one, we start doing a BFS. Okay, we take it out of the cell, and after that, what do we do? We just do a simple BFS. That means going in all the four directions that are present there. That is what we will be doing right here. So we'll take this out of the cell and we'll try to go on all the four directions. And all the four directions, we see that we will go on to right. That is from here to right. We'll go down. And the up and the left is not a valid cell, so we cannot go there. Fine. So what will happen in our queue? What will be added? The indexes that is one comma two and two comma one will be added. Fine. And this is our first level of BFS, mind you. So all the guys that are in our queue right now, that is this guy, this guy, this guy right here, and also this guy right here. All of these guys, if they can reach a zero, they will reach a 10 time one. Now, this is the main concept. Okay. Now, why can we actually say that every one of them are reaching in time of a time of one? See, BFS is nothing but breadth first travel set, right? And every one of them are going level wise. This is important. So if we are doing a D BFS, we took out this and we know that we could reach these two guys fine. From 1, 3, that is this cell, we can reach where? To this cell and the bottom cell here. And what are its indexes? Its indexes are 1, 2 and also 2, 3. So you see that this after doing this BFS for this index, we get these two guys. And mind you, we are traveling all of these in time unit one. That means if I start from any of these guys right here, I'll be jumping onto its nearest zero if there is one in one unit of time. That is what BFS is, right? If we can jump it in one unit of time, these are the values that are present there and similarly we'll do it for 3 1 and 3 3 fine i'll not be doing this for 3 1 and 3 3 let's just continue for this that we are having right here i'll just erase this part let's just see we have done the bfs for this thing and everything has been done now what we can see these are our possible values that are in our queue right now fine this is in our queue just think of it as this is in our queue now from 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 we see that it has been repeated we can obviously maintain a visited arrays to not go there twice fine so let's just do it like this that is 1 comma 2 is there 2 comma 1 is there and 2 comma 3 is there this is fine now from here these guys will try to move on radially to the up down left and right from 1 comma 2 that is this position will go down left and right but see left and right have already been visited we do not care about that so we'll just go down fine so i'll just erase this part as well and after that we try to go down the down part is nothing but 2 comma 2 right and mind you this is our second level of bfs all the bfs in level one was done by the guys who had one fine and after that they all took a step one of one and wherever they reached now this is the values that is in our queue now after this what are we getting this is our second level so that means on the second step these guys can go where that is our thing right so basically in every level we will be able to find okay this is where i can reach on this is where i can reach on fine so this is the whole intuition behind this problem that on every level you discover a new value to be going on to fine 
so now let's understand this with our code better so i hope the intuition is clear because uh, the intuition lies behind that why are we inserting all the ones at the first into our queue you could obviously do it in a very brute force manner that is something like this that is from this one you can reach to the nearest zero in what distance that is this one this one okay you can obviously try it every possible path that is for every one you can also do a bfs right there but this is the optimal way in which you can do it fine so how do we do it let's see the code first so the code I've implemented it right here. So this DX DY, you must be very familiar with it. We are using it since day one. If not, please do check out the graph playlist and you'll understand it. It is consisting of all the graph questions from lead code only. So we have created a queue of pair of int command, which is storing the ith and the jth position. After that, we are inserting all the elements that are having the value as one as discussed before. And we are marking it as visited in the same array of vector that is given to us itself fine and they have said that we can also have no values in our queue right so there is a edge case to it that means what if, if all the values are zero we'll have no value as one right so they have said you need to return the answer as minus one and what if there are all ones that means if this is something like this there is no water right so then also you can never reach any water island or path so then also we need to return a minus one so that is what i have done here i have taken care of the edge case that is if the queue is empty or if the queue is full you need to return a minus one now as said we'll be going on to the bfs part this is a plain old bfs bfs that we are doing since day one okay and we are just iterating on all the four directions and what are we doing we are saying if our value is zero mind you we do not need a uh, another one right we just need value zero if the cell that i'm on jumping on is a zero what do we do we just say that okay from here i can jump further on but if that if it is not a zero we do not need to take care of anything fine if it is a zero we jump onto it and we mark it as visited and visited as marked as two here okay this means visited this I'm marking it as visited. This is done uh, in the same array that was given to us in the question. Fine. And we just push it into our queue. And what is this maximum variable taking care of? This is taking care of the levels, as we said. So what are these levels? As I explained to you in the question, so that is the level. But still, I'll be explaining it once more. See, at first, what we did was we added all the ones that is there into our queue. Fine. And we know if we are jumping, that is for BFS, that is we are traveling level wise. That means we are traveling everything at once. So it is taking one unit of time at a particular level. Okay, so you must be familiar with this by now. So for BFS, what do we do? We jump to its neighboring cells all together at the same time by one unit of time this is the most important part okay we are traveling to it by one unit of time so that is what we are doing so now let's get on to the code part again so that is why we are doing a uh, maintaining a counter variable which is telling you okay this is my maximum unit that we are doing after this is done what do we do and mind you this maxi variable which we are updating is outside the bfs part why so because we are traveling level wise again this is the concept of bfs only okay you need to be familiar with this bfs concept in order to understand this part so after that what do we return we return maxi minus one why maxi minus one let's see that if we are starting from here fine we are going here and we are coming here we are also calculating the part where we are jumping from so that is why three would be your answer which would be coming on if we do a normal BFS because we are counting the place from we are starting also. That is why we need to subtract one because they have not counted the part from where we are starting. Fine. That is why we are doing a minus one there. 
and that's it for this code and the code will obviously be available in the description below please do check it out and if you still have any doubt please do ask me in the comment i'll be answering your doubts also there and this code has already been submitted no need to worry about that part also okay so i've already submitted this code also and yeah i did get a lot of wrong answers at first and then a compiler and then got accepted eventually obviously uh, since we are doing it parallelly that means i'm actually submitting it at first i'm trying it first and then only i'm explaining it to you okay no need to worry about that code first and if you want to know about more about why i got this wrong answer i'll just explain it to you by the way the video is over if you want to know about why i got a wrong answer i'll be explaining it to you so i did not do maxi minus one at first that is why i got two wrong answers i could not figure out that part that i was actually counting it so this was my silly mistake that i did okay so we just need to take care of this part that is